Hey guys, good, <clears throat> good morning everyone. Welcome to today's video. Today I am going to take you to Macedonia State Park, um, which is in Sharon, Connecticut. So it's going to be about a 73 mile uh, ride. We'll see how the roads are since we had a terrible storm on Tuesday um, that kind of wiped down a lot of trees. So uh, let's get started. tropical storm come through Connecticut and Danbury was hit pretty hard with it. You could see that a lot of down tree limbs and uh, actually some, some streets have been closed off because of down trees and the uh, they haven't been able to come through to fix a lot of these roads yet or clear the roads yet um, and so people are have been going on have been going through one week without power and I know my sister is struggling right now because it's been pretty hot and humid and it's definitely not pleasant when you don't have air conditioning. sight there um, right riding through here and a lot of down trees and luckily they were able to clear most of them out of the way uh, but you saw that you know there was a little bit of traffic coming here because of a tree that was down and they were clearing it uh, it wasn't too bad but still um, you know it's kind of interesting to see I'm curious to see what Macedonia State Park looks like. Um, and by the way, that is, I'm going to show you guys the view there <clears throat> um, in the background. It's probably a little better. So um, yes, I'm heading over to Macedonia State Park today and Macedonia, um, going over there because I love that climb. It is about six miles and 2% grade. So just my kind of leisure you know i get my climbing in but i also you know it's not too hard of an effort to do 
and uh, it is going to because it's through a state park it'll be partly dirt roads gravel roads and there are going to be some fairly rocky parts like sharp rocks from what I remember the last two times that we we've ridden through it so um, the end of Macedonia State Park will be at the top of Skiff Mountain and Skiff Mountain is uh, one of the places that we've done a couple of workouts on so I'm gonna be coming down Skiff uh, and heading back home that way but yeah I am my tire also is my my rear tire seems a bit uh, deflated and I don't know um, I don't know actually I, I did put air in it last week so it's probably my fault that I didn't put air in it this morning so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now saddlebag and so my CO2 canister and ah oh dang it and my uh, Phillips head screwdriver that I like to keep handy fell off so now I'm gonna have to turn around here and see if I can get it So this was a series of unfortunate events. Um, a little scary going through um, these downed wires. I, I didn't I didn't realize I wasn't recording on one of the um, roads that uh, Spring Lake Road that I rode through, and uh, there was some severe downed power lines. Um, so I don't know what to expect uh, further on over this side. This, I don't know if there are any more um, downed wires over here, but I definitely see in the beginning of this of this particular road, uh, there was a wire that was hanging low. So, um, ugh, I'm kind of like out of breath. I think I, I was a little, um, I don't know, I got spooked me that I had to go over these downed wires and um, maybe I should have walked through it. Uh, I don't... And there was a woman who ran over who was running and she you know she she was fine going over the the wires so um yeah i guess we'll see what the rest of the ride is like um so i don't know you know what to expect with macedonia uh state park to see if it's uh even rideable through there uh i keep thinking my tires are running low um i guess they're fine but yeah still bummed about losing my my um my co2 canister there uh no idea i couldn't find it i went back and and looked for it couldn't find it and uh so i just kept uh i just kept going and uh luckily i have my um my pump with me so if worse comes to worse I uh, could use that and the only reason why I'm a little concerned about today's ride is because uh, part of Macedonia uh, is has a bit of a rocky um, terrain like pretty sharp rocks so anyway um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have something to eat right now and uh, yeah uh, have something to eat 
and then head on over. Uh, so I'm here um, in New York, top of Quaker Hill, and uh, I'm in Birds Hill Road right now. And so this is a downhill dirt road. Uh, so that should be fine. The dirt should be fine. Um, it's the rocky parts that I'm concerned about. Okay, we are 30 miles and two hours and 20 minutes into the ride. Um, I've said this before in the past, um, I always have this problem with my bib shorts on the right inner thigh. I get this um, tear and I can't seem to figure out what it's where it's coming from or what, what the cause of it is. But now I think I know what the issue is looking closely at my, um, at my saddle and the saddle rails. And so what I'm finding out is as I'm pedaling, I can feel something snagging onto the fabric. And um, that's what's causing the tear. And just now I stopped and I happened to examine um, what the cause of it or what the possible cause might be. And I think it's from the screw on um, the right side of my saddle to tighten the uh, saddle in place and so that screw I think is rubbing up against my inner thigh and so I think what I'm going to do I don't have um, electrical tape but I was gonna think I was thinking of covering it with electrical tape so that it's not snagging onto the fabric because it's causing quite a bit of a tear now on my inner thigh and uh, I don't know how big it's gonna get pretty big and it's frustrating because these bib shorts whoops it's frustrating because these bib shorts are uh, you know not cheap and so that's always been a, a frustration of mine is Macedonia State Park. 
a little over 30 miles, so it's only like a mile and a half, two miles away from Scattercook Road, that the road that I was just on before, um, another dirt road. So there's a lot of dirt roads we're going through today. Thank goodness I have the, I have, uh, my tires are 28 uh, millimeter tires, and so I always run a little wider tires because here in Connecticut, we do have a mix of gravel, dirt, and paved roads. So um, just from comfort standpoint, um, that's what um, I have on my, my bike setup. So looks like some people are actually doing some picnicking or camping here. I'm not sure if the campgrounds are open actually, but this is just a nice spot. I have the, the there's a water trickling behind me and it just is so peaceful and it reminds me how much I enjoy being out in the woods and out in the forest or in parks away from busy streets and busy roads with cars uh, whizzing by you. Um, it, it's a nice peaceful retreat uh, coming from riding from Danbury up here in Sharon um, it's definitely, um, it's nice and peaceful to, to, to ride through here. And it's hard for me to ride fast through here because I just want to enjoy the scenery and the landscapes and, uh, enjoy the scenery and the landscape and, um, you know, just enjoy the, the breeze, um, and all that. So yeah um so i guess that leads me to um the next thing i wanted to mention to you guys is that um every saturday jason and i would go for a hike uh, and it reminds me again of how much i enjoy i how much i miss being out in the woods and uh, since i enjoy riding the bike um i thought perhaps maybe i would try mountain biking and so um, we have tried mountain biking last year. We actually rode the mountain bike on Thunder Mountain in uh, outside of Bryce Canyon. And, uh, you know, that was quite an experience. Uh, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And so uh, a couple days ago, I got to purchase a mountain bike. Now, it hasn't come in yet. Uh, they haven't shipped it out yet because... It's just a really slow uh, process lately because of COVID. So I'm not gonna reveal a lot about this, this mountain bike, but um, I will talk about it once I get it. And so, yeah, um, that is uh, what I wanted to tell you guys today here out in Macedonia State Park. So um, I am going to continue um, eating and, uh, and also ride through uh, the park. So now I'm here at the top of Skiff Mountain. Uh, yeah, we did our uh, couple of workouts up here. We did a map efforts up Skiff Mountain, the north side of Skiff Mountain. It's a short, I think it's a 0.4 mile segment, but um, kind of steep. And we also did a couple of sprints down this road. So yeah, at the top, I believe this is, uh, highest elevation is 1,300 feet above sea level, uh, which is nowhere near in comparison to a couple of places I know of up there that's 10, 14, 15,000 feet above uh, elevation. So 
this is our elevation. Um, this is, I don't know, this is like fifth stop already. Uh, I figured it's nice to just stop and take a break because it is starting to get, it's starting to heat up. And thankfully, like I said, uh, these roads are fairly tree covered, so it's nice. And we, I also get a little bit of a breeze there. Um, not feeling it today though. I've been trying to figure out if it's just like lack of motivation or um, just my energy level today is just really low and uh, I you know a couple of things that kind of um, I guess mess with my mind uh, losing my uh, CO2 canister and uh, tear on my bib shorts uh, all those downed trees and wires but got through it so um, luckily I think I was afraid that there might be a lot of downed trees in uh, through Macedonia State Park and uh, I didn't I saw some downed trees but uh, nothing to the point where I had to like climb it or anything so I guess that's that's a good thing and um, so yeah let me I have to fix my wheel again on all sorts of issues today um, I, I'm hearing uh, disc rub in one of the tires or one of the wheels. I don't exactly know if it's my front or my rear, so I got to check that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see, 30 miles in and about three and a half hours into the ride. So I have about 40 miles, 41 miles left to go to get back home. Uh, I'm gonna do one more stop, a couple of other stops, just so that I can just fuel or hydrate as well. So 
I'm running dangerously low on water right now. Which sucks because, you know, I really need it. I have about 20 miles left to go. And, um, with still some more climbing, so... I don't know if that's going to last me. I have less, about half a bottle of water left. Ugh. Frustrating. I also need to use the bathroom. And over here, there's, I usually stop in this spot, but it looks like there are people fishing or playing in the water down there. So can't do that. Ah. I just called Jason and he is still, I, he sounded like he was set to ride on the bike erg, so I'm just gonna leave him alone and see what I can do on my end here. So you're going to be pretty disappointed with me and I am pretty disappointed with myself. Um, I am bailing on this ride because it's just, uh, I'm frustrated because when I checked on Google Maps to see if there are nearby convenience stores and it looks like they're just restaurants and um, there is a convenience store, but it's about 10 miles back and I am just completely out of water and thirsty. So I'm here at River Road. I'm at 55 miles with about four and a half hours of riding. And I'm actually pretty surprised that I ran out of water that quickly. Um, I can't figure out as to, I, I maybe because it's a lot, warmer today and I'm just sweating a lot so I'm drinking a lot more but man I wish that there was um I, I wish that water was easily accessible around here um and maybe it is and I just have to plan myself just kind of better prepare myself in the on the next ride so that I can um you know, I can just get through the ride. So just as a lesson learned, I, um, this was supposed to be a five and a half hour ride and I was able to get away, almost dropped the bike. I was able to, I, I was able to get away with three water bottles in the past, um, with five hours of riding, but I think maybe it's just because of the heat that is causing me to drink more and I'm just not, you know, happy with myself. I'm just um, pretty disappointed that I am going this route, but uh, I feel like it's just another one of those lessons learned. Um, so in the summer, maybe just keep it, the ride at four, four and a half hours because of the heat or just plan accordingly to stop at a convenience store to get extra water or extra um, some type of hydration. So um, Jason's going to come and pick me up um, and bring cold water for me. Oh. Say bye Jason. Thanks honey. Oh, I'll take that inside. I'll get it inside. So it is the next day now. Um, luckily, Jason was able to rescue me from the predicament that I got myself into yesterday. Um, and I had a lot of time to think about exactly what happened. Um, I honestly, you know, a lot of things were, I, I wasn't thinking clearly at the time, but now that I had a full night of rest, you know, got to thinking about exactly um, what happened. So my thought was that I was dehydrated. Um, I didn't really talk about this, but I started intermittent fasting. This would be the third week, the start of the third week of my 
following intermittent fasting and um, what I do is I fast for 16 hours and I eat for eight hours and um, I have been feeling uh, I have been getting headaches from it and uh, I read through some of the literature on intermittent fasting and they said that the side effects was going to be headaches and a, p a bunch of other stuff but headaches was the only thing that I was been feeling this was before actual before I started riding um, and and that is due to dehydration so when I was stopped at River Road yesterday I started to get a headache and which is unusual because I have ridden in longer uh, time period uh, much longer duration before and have not experienced headaches but um, it was most likely from being dehydrated that was uh, possibly the cause of it now you're if you're asking like is why I'm fasting during my rides I'm actually not fasting during my rides um, I actually um, only fast five days a week which is during the week weekdays and on the weekends I don't follow the fasting plan because I have to make sure that when I do these long rides that I have proper fueling uh, for that so um, I don't do fasting on the weekend so but I also think that that could be the remnants of what I've been doing for the week uh, so that's something to consider um, when I'm doing longer rides next time um, especially anything more than four hours and making sure I'm constantly constantly drinking uh, because uh, I'm sweating a lot more uh, in the heat. So I also didn't get to uh, tell you guys about my um, the overall stats for the ride. So looking through my phone, I did 55 and a half miles at 4,140 feet of elevation at 12.7 miles per hour. Uh, and took me about four hours and 22 minutes uh, to do so a little slower uh, in the past but um, you know it is what it is um, all right so what I'm gonna do today is actually uh, clean my bike because there were a lot of dirt roads that I went through yesterday and I don't like having gunky drivetrain um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that and I will see you guys again next week. I have to figure out what kind of ride I'm going to do. It is an active recovery week, so we'll have to make sure. I'll have to make sure that I uh, drop the mileage a little bit. So see you again next week. Don't forget to enjoy the ride. Take care. Bye-bye.